Hey guys, it's Vision Moss here, and today I'm going to be showing you Storm's first month of service dog training. So I want to make a few notes before we begin with this video. And for the first note, I'm going to say that yes, I am starting out with this dog as from a puppy. But a lot of things that I show and explain in this video goes along with an older dog as well if you are starting out with an older dog for service dog training. Another note that I want to make is that every dog learns at a different training pace. So don't be frustrated with your dog if they're learning slower than my dogs or any other dogs. Every dog is different and you have to make note on that on your dog. I have noticed that Storm is kind of in the middle of some things she gets on quicker, but other things she learns a little slower. And you just got to find a middle or learn what your dog can do and not. So don't be frustrated with that. It's okay. Every dog, like I said, is different. There is a few things that I worked on with Storm that I didn't end up recording and I have no clue why. So for the first one is potty training. A service dog has to be 100% potty trained. And that is, of course, one thing that I did work on Storm with um, that I didn't catch on recording. So I wanted to make a note of that here. Another thing is gear uh, desensitizing which means basically getting the dog used to wearing gear and wearing things that they normally wouldn't wear, such as vests, um, you know, and like harnesses and stuff like that. It could work uh, both ways. So uh, going along with that is pretty much you just place a vest on the dog and just treat them. Or you can have periods of time where you put a vest or a harness on a dog and just leave it on them for a little bit and let them do their daily routines or daily things that they like to do wearing those things. Um, or another way you can do it is you can put the harness or the vest on the dog and play with them, give them treats, anything like that. Um, that works as well with desensitizing to gear. Also, for instance, if you get a puppy, I highly recommend doing a lot of bonding work with the dog because you want the dog to learn that they can trust you. So I did a lot of bonding exercises with Storm as well. So right now I'm going to be talking about the first few clips that I'm about to show you. So these clips occurred the first few nights that I did bring Storm home. So she is, yes, very little and very cute, I know. But pretty much what we worked on was just sit and lay down. That was pretty much all it was. Um, training a dog to sit and lay down can also be another way of bonding exercises because it just teaches the dog that they listen to you, they can listen to you, and um, it just builds that bond between you two. So I did sit and lay down, and this is where I did that. Along with potty training and gear desensitizing, the basics are very important to the very beginning of service dog training, such as sit, lay down, heal, and stay. All of those are very important, so of course I started that right away with Storm. Early socializing and desensitizing is also a very important role in a service dog's life, and I highly recommend to do it from the very beginning of the 12 week mark for puppies. It can also work for older dogs as well, but it's very highly recommended for puppies within the 12 week mark. Desensitizing and desensitizing are two separate things, but they can both work together to create the same result. So for socializing or with puppies, early socializing is pretty much socializing dogs with people or other animals just so they get used to that specific animal slash person or people in general just so when they come across those things later on in their life they're pretty much already used to it so it doesn't bother them they're not curious about it or it won't affect their daily life it's very critical for puppies within the 12 week mark because it sets them up for their success and builds that tolerance up for when they're older this can also go along with older dogs as well. It's very important to keep socializing over and over periodically throughout the dog's life just so they continue to be used to those things. Same thing with desensitizing. Now desensitizing is the same thing as socializing but it's not with other live things. It's basically socializing the dog with uh, animate objects, so things that aren't live, so such as escalators, elevators, doors, um, Anything of the sort, hats, anything that a dog could normally or uh, be scared of. Um, a lot of times I see people desensitize their dogs to Halloween animatronics 
or anything that normally you think that a dog would be afraid of or get afraid of or uh, develop a fear over, you want to desensitize the dog to. So crowds as well are another one. Desensitizing is very important, especially for a service dog, because these dogs are going to be near these things at a daily basis, and you want them to be prepared and be ready so you don't have to deal with the issue in your daily life when you're going out and doing things, because these dogs are meant to help you. So, so here I am doing early socializing with Storm. It is very important within the 12 week mark. But since she is younger than 12 weeks and she doesn't have the vaccinations that are required, but she's too young to have them, if she was walking around in public, she could get sick. So that is why it's very important to use a tool such as a satchel to put your puppy in so they're not touching the ground or even a dog stroller. And you'll see me use both because I started out with a satchel when she was a lot smaller, but she got a lot bigger than and like quicker than I thought she was going to. So I ended up having to move to a stroller. I went to public places with her and these tools and pretty much just treated her over and over and just let her get exposed to all the sounds and smells that these places can provide and just getting used to everything. Um, I did end up taking her to a football game as well because that was a really good opportunity for socializing since it's so loud. There's clapping, there's people talking over a loudspeaker, there's a lot of people around, there's just many, many sounds overall. So that was another way of me socializing and desensitizing Storm as well, along with being in public such as stores and normal places I would go to every day. But you also want to take it to the next level and always go over the top because you may never know one day you might go to a football game and need your service dog with you and what if your service dog isn't ready for that yet or never was socialized to that so they may not do as good as well so even things that you may not think you'll ever go to you might want to desensitize the dog to as well because like I said you may never know and you want the dog to be ready for anything and every possibility. So moving forward to when Storm was finally old enough to get her vaccinations to where she can actually walk around and it'll be safe for her. So we got to ditch the stroller. We went to our local Lowe's, which is a pet friendly store to walk around and work on her movement and motor skills, which means working on her positioning and her heel, along with a little bit of focus work and distraction work. Um, this is more of like the base work of a service dog. This is the more important, really, really important base work. So what this means, the positioning at least, is that she needs to learn that she has to be next to me, not in front of me, not behind me, but next to me, right next to my leg. So we worked on that along with the heel. And I'm not really focused on her tight heel just yet. I'm more worried about teaching her what a loose leash walk is and pretty much to know that the leash should not be tight, it should be loose, and that she could just gradually walk next to me. But once she gets older, we will start working on tightening it and actually forming it into a real heel. But right now, it's just a loose leash walk, pretty much. And like I said before, this is when we started introducing distraction and focus work. And what this means is that the dog will just focus on the handler no matter what is going on around them, which is very important so a dog doesn't miss an alert. And how we got started with that pretty much was that if there was any distraction of any kind, I took a treat and put it up to my face and if she looked at me, I treated her for that. And then over time, I periodically started making it longer and longer before I gave her a treat just so she learns that she doesn't need to expect a treat right away and that she needs to hold the focus a little bit longer before she gets a treat. And with the motoring skills and the distraction work, this is pretty much what we are currently working on as well because it just takes over time. Here I am introducing escalators to Storm and working on desensitizing them to her. Now, escalators are like a dog's biggest enemy. <laughs> they are always terrified of them, which I get it because, you know, the floor is moving. It's weird but you always want to desensitize your service dog to them because they are everywhere. They are in malls, they are in airports, and you always want your dog to be okay with them, to be able to go up and down them. I don't always recommend going on them unless your dog has boots though because your dog's nails can get hurt on them. So I always prefer to go on uh, elevators instead, but you never know, like I said, when you're going to go on an escalator. So you always want your dog to be prepared for that. Yes, Storm is in a mall, and usually I wouldn't recommend a service dog in training to go out in non-pet friendly places this early on, 
but I'm always all for desensitizing and socializing and this is the only place that has an escalator around me or somewhat like drivable close to me. So that is why we are in a mall and it is very important to do desensitizing as early on as you can with your dog. So since she is still a puppy and very, very young, I am going to try and do this with her because it's, like I said, very, very important. So there's my little note on that. Now pretty much what I'm doing is just making her walk up to it and treating for any curiosity or any engagement I get from her towards the escalator, any curiosity, anything that she does towards it, sniffs it, walks up to it, anything like that, just for her being interested in it, I'm going to give her a treat. We're going to keep walking away and keep walking up to it. I'm going to treat her for walking towards it or walking up to it. Oh, of course, we're not going to go on it yet because I don't think that Storm is ready. She needs to get used to actually being around it before she can actually get on it. So we are only just working around like the foot of it, just at the beginning of it before even going on it. She can get a little hesitant about it and always that is okay for a dog that doesn't even know what it is or has is just now getting introduced to it. That's perfectly okay. You just want to make it positive and if the dog is being a little bit weird about it you just want to try to walk away and just restart and try to make it a better positive experience this goes along with anything not just escalators as well this can go along with doors with elevators anything of the sort as well Another very, very important part of socializing is letting people pet your dog. I know it's very controversial because you're not supposed to pet service dogs, but when it comes down to socializing your dog, you want to make sure that your dog doesn't develop any fears against people. So, of course, if somebody asks to pet your dog and you're feeling okay enough for it, just go ahead and take the time out to let that person pet your dog because you don't want your dog developing any fears against people, especially since, you know, there's people everywhere and trust me, it will become a problem. <laughs> So that is Storm's first month of service dog training and I know there isn't really that much that we showed or recorded. There really isn't that much that you can really do in, within the first month of service dog training besides just building up a base for everything. It's really really important that you want to do that and also the first few months of service dog training always go very slow. So. Of course, I plan on doing more videos like this, showing you Storm's training journey, along with helping you with your dogs, because that is, of course, my goal. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful, and if you have any questions, of course, you can comment them down below. I will try my best to answer to all of you. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Later.